hello students welcome to my channel engineers academy let's solve this problem in this problem it is said that express f1 f2 and f3 as cartesian vectors right so we will consider f1 f2 and f3 one by one so if if this is f1 850 newton so it is making some angle with the y axis let's say if we consider this angle let's say that this is angle theta right so we are given this angle theta in the form of this small triangle right so if we consider this theta so then we will be considering this theta in this triangle right so if if this is the y component of this f1 right and we are considering this theta then this is the cos component right so we can write that this is f1y and this is f1 cos of theta and similarly this f1 will have one component which will be acting in the positive x direction right so, so let's say this is f1 x so if this is the cos component then this one is the sine component so we will write that this is f1 sine of theta right so let me write that f1 x is f1 sine of theta and f1 magnitude is 850 sine of theta right so if i consider this triangle and if this is theta then sine of theta is perpendicular divided by hypotenuse right so perpendicular is 4 and hypotenuse is 5 right so sine of theta is 4 divided by 5 right so this is f1x similarly f1y so f1y is f1 cos of theta so again f1 magnitude is 850 and cos of theta from this triangle is base divided by hypotenuse right so base is 3 and hypotenuse is 5 right so we will write that cos of theta is 3 divided by 5 and similarly as we know that f1 is acting in the negative y direction so i will write negative sign here right so this is minus 850 3 divided by 5 so we can find f1 x so this is 850 multiply 4 divided by 5 so this is 680 so f1 x is 680 newtons and similarly this one is minus 850 into 3 divided by 5 right so this is minus 510 newtons right so if we want to represent that f1 is a cartesian vector so then f1 vector will be equal to f1 x i plus f1 y j Right, so f1 x is 680 i plus uh, sorry this f1 y is negative so we will write it as minus this is minus 5 10 j right so this is f1 cartesian vector representation similarly if we want to resolve this f2 into its components right so it will have two components again right so this since this f2 is making 60 degrees with the y axis right so this will be the f2 y component right like this so since the angle is made with this one with the y axis right so then this will be 625 cos of 30 degrees right and this is equal to f2 y and similarly this f2 will have a component in the negative x direction right so if this is the cos component then this one this f2x will be the sine component right so we can write that this is minus 625 sine of 30 degrees and similarly this is also minus right this is acting in the negative y direction so we can write that f2x is minus 625 sine of 30 degrees and similarly f2y is minus 625 cos of 30 degrees right 625 sine of 30 this is 312.5 right so minus 312.5 newtons and this is 541.27 minus 541.27 newtons right similarly if, if if we resolve the f3 force into its components right so it will have one component which will be acting in the positive y direction 
like this right and it will have one component which will be acting in the negative x direction right so this one is f3x and this one is f3y and since the angle is made with the y axis so this component is the cos component so we can write that this is 750 cos of 45 degrees so we can write that f3x and f3y so f3y is 750 cos of 45 degrees so if this component is the cos component then f3x is the sine component right so we will write that this is minus since this is acting in the negative x direction so minus 750 sine of 45 degrees right so this is minus 531.04 right so minus 531.04 newtons and similarly this f3y will also be equal to 531.04 newtons since cos of 45 and sine of 45 have same value right so now if we write the vector representation of f2 right so f2 is equal to f2 xi plus f2 yj so f2 x is minus 312.5 i minus 541.27 j similarly f3 vector is equal to minus 531.04 i this is f3 x and plus 531.04 j right so these are the vector representation of f1 f2 and f3 now in this second problem it is said that determine the magnitude of the resultant force and its direction measured counterclockwise from the positive x axis right so we have to find the resultant of these f1 f2 and f3 right so we have to find the our x component of the resultant that is the component of the resultant acting in the positive x direction so our x will be equal to the summation of all components in the x direction right so this means that this summation of fx means that this is equal to f1x plus f2x plus f3x right so f1x is 680 minus f2x and this is f3x right so f3x is again negative so we will write minus 531.04 680 minus 312.5 minus 531.04 this is negative right so this is minus 163.54 so our x is minus 163.54 newtons right and similarly our y will be equal to the summation of all components which are acting in the y direction right so f1 y is minus 510 similarly f2 y is minus 541.27 and f3y is positive right so this is plus 531.04 minus 510 minus 541.27 plus 531.04 this is equal to minus 520.23 minus 520.23 newtons so now let's say that this is my negative x-axis and this is my negative y-axis right so if we represent the resultant on this diagram right so our x is negative right so if we represent the our x component right so this is the our x right so our x and our y is also negative right so it is acting in the negative y direction right so this is our y right so the summation of our x and our y by head to tail rule right this is our y and this one is our x so they will give us the resultant vector right so the resultant will be from the tail of our x to the head of our y right so this is the resultant 
right so in the problem it is said that find the angle of the resultant measured counterclockwise from the positive x axis is so if if i draw the positive x axis then this is our positive x axis right so we have to find this angle right so let's say that this angle is let's say theta right so then this angle is 180 degrees right so if we find this theta so then we will add 180 degrees with this theta so then that will be the angle of this resultant with the positive x axis is right so let me find this theta so if i apply tan theta to this triangle so we can write that tan theta is equal to ry divided by rx right so then theta will be equal to tan inverse ry right so we will write only the magnitudes right so this is 520.23 divided by rx right so rx is 163.54 520.23 divided by 163.54 so the theta is 72.55 right so theta is 72.55 degrees and if let's say that this whole angle is let's say alpha right so alpha is the angle with the positive x axis right so alpha will be equal to 180 plus theta right this part is 180 degrees and then this is theta right so then this whole angle is alpha right so 180 plus theta so 180 plus 72.55 degrees So this is 252.55 and if you want to find the resultant magnitude so again we can apply Pythagoras theorem to this triangle so R, R will be equal to Rx squared plus Ry squared right so Rx is 163.54 and ry is 520.23 so the resultant magnitude is 545.33 newtons right so this is the resultant magnitude and this is the angle of the resultant measured in the counterclockwise direction from the positive x-axis right so this is the solution of this particular